getting to the end of this list of potentially protective, proactive strategy, supplemental support as we go forward in today's current corona climate. Only a couple more we're going to add. We don't want to overwhelm. There's a million and one potential hypotheses, strategies, mechanisms of why this might work or that might work. Well, we've gone over the data. We scrutinize it just like we do with everything else. And we've just tried to add a few that make sense based on the pathophysiology, based on the history, based on the reports coming in to fuel the fire to potentially use it. I know we always want to know before we use something like that or especially before we open our mouth and recommend something to somebody. We want to make sure we do the research our own on it and check it out. So that's why we've been adding this list. Today we're talking about a plant antioxidant, a polyphenol called quercetin. Now there's a million of these polyphenols out there. Why quercetin? Well, quercetin has been shown to have a specific affinity for the lung tissue, which is of con increased concern right now in light of the manifestation, potential manifestation of this viral infection. Quercetin has also been shown to be antiviral. Um, a lot of studies out there, sometimes they'll do these little, these little um, retrospective write-ups where they make an antiviral index. Quercetin, a lot of the times, is on top of that list, with a side note being, you know what else is also on the top of that list? Allicin. Allicin coming from garlic. That's the, you can get that as an allicin extract coming from garlic, or you can eat the garlic alone. Garlic was always eating that regularly just for the, the plethora of immune-boosting benefits that garlic is supposed to have, cardiovascular benefits that garlic is supposed to have. Now we can implement it by eating a little bit more. Maybe add two cloves to that. Maybe add those cloves twice a day to your meal. Intelligent, intentional eating garlic. Utilize that as food, as medicine. Reel it in. Back to the quercetin. Quercetin, antiviral, like we said. How does it help specifically right here? It has been shown to have these antiviral properties um, through various studies. It has been documented in things like influenza, um, hepatitis C, um, even SARS-CoV-1. It was shown to be beneficial. There were a lot of studies about it with SARS-CoV-1. There's nothing yet back with SARS-CoV-2 specifically. There are some studies in the work. But again, we're going off history, knowledge that we're learning, and making the best decisions from there. Another thing that happens when you have a manifestation like this, whether it's in the lungs or other tissues in the body, is due to the damage and the increased demand, the combat, the fight, your body gets drained of its own endogenous sources, its endogenous load of antioxidant, which are needed to keep you healthy. Things like reduced glutathione, you may have heard of that before. Something else called SOD, superoxide dismutase. Those things become depleted. Quercetin has been shown to help replenish these, get in the cycle to help build these back up. So quercetin, in addition to being antiviral due to blocking the adhesion and penetration of the virus into cells, specifically in the lung tissue, has also been shown to kind of replenish and reboost your combat team on the inside, like we said, the glutathione and things like that. So for these reasons, we thought it was worth adding quercetin to our own personal supply, just of some pro proactive rotation as we go forward, but also to stock up on for those proactive, inquisitive patients that we come across in the, in the office. So let's see here right now. In addition to the original foundational support, we talked about liposomal vitamin C, liposomal melatonin, and now quercetin. May hit you with one more, and then we'll, we'll end it right there as far as our proactive corona combat.